diffuse and specular materials. So in this video, well, we need to understand these for getting rendering just right. We'll be looking at the two in isolation and seeing what they do, and combining them to see the overall effect. And just a reminder that we are still using Blender Render. So diffuse versus specular reflections. Well, both are types of reflection, and diffuse is essentially when light scatters as it hits the surface, and specular is a direct reflection of the light onto the viewer. Materials in the real world are often a mix of the two. So, a bit of physics for you all. The law of reflection. So we've got the blue arrow on the left, and that's the light coming in, the angle of instance of that light beam coming in. This is just a, a tiny photon hitting this surface. Equals the angle of reflection, that's the light coming out of it. So that's the basic law of reflection, and let's look at that in a bit more detail. So specular reflection looks kind of like this. So a highly specular surface, almost 100% in this case, uh, if I've got my angles and everything right, the light beam comes in and comes out in exactly the same way it came in. And that would produce uh, what would you'd see um, like on a, in a mirror or on a lake, a still lake reflecting uh, mountains in the background, how picturesque. So that would be a, a almost 100% spe specular reflection where you get a direct reflection of whatever is coming in. Diffuse reflection, however, is slightly different. Because the real world is not all lovely, flat and smooth, we end up with a lot of diffuse reflection. As you can see here, the light coming in and going out is all over the place, so you don't get direct reflection. Just like when you look at your wall right now, it's probably painted in a matte or a satin paint rather than a highly glossy paint, which is more specular. And then, of course, you may have mirrored walls. So. Let's hop over into Blender and see how these act when using Blender Render. Right, so I've opened up a new Blender file. I suggest you save the work that you're working on. Now, the reason why I've opened up a new one is because we're going to be playing about and experimenting, and we don't want to do that in the chess scene that we're working with at the moment. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get rid of our cube that's here, because it's not going to show off uh, the diffuse versus specular very well. So I'm just going to delete that from our scene. I'm then going to add into our scene the monkey. A bit more exciting a mesh. And since the light is above the monkey just behind it, as we can see here, that little orange blob now, well, we will want to orientate our monkey so at least its face is facing that way. So I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis. There we go. And that would probably be enough, but I'm just going to rotate it around the Z as well so the face is facing the light. I'm going to quickly hop over into rendered mode on the viewport shading just to make sure that the face is getting the right amount of light. And it seems it is. Now, a couple of things I want to do that's a bit too low poly for me. I do want to up it so I can really show off um, what the specular and diffuse shading can do. So I'm going to turn on smooth shading initially and see what happens. And it's still a bit jagged around the edge. So as we've done in the past, I'm going to add a modifier, a subsurface division modifier, just to smooth this mesh out. So under the wrench, under add modifier, so we're going to add the modifier here, subdivision surface modifier, under the generate, second column, third one up from the bottom, and oh, that's done enough smoothing, I'm happy with that, I think it, if it gets any smoother, probably won't notice, if we up it even one more, oh, there isn't a small difference there, but you, again, you get into diminishing returns quite quickly. So I'll probably leave that at two for the moment. So there we have our monkey. I think she's called Suzanne. Yes, she is. Excellent. So we need to apply the material to that monkey there. So I'm going to create a new material and just call it test. So there we go. And this material, let's scroll down a little and have a look at the options. So we have diffuse and specular. We're going to be focused on these two here. Um, shading, transparency, mirror, subsurface scattering, strand, options, etc, etc. Um, we can go into those at a later time, but not now. We really want to focus on just these two here, because they're going to make up 
most of what you're going to be doing. So I'm just going to hide all of that lot there. Okay, so the intensity on both of these simply turns up their values. So if they're both down at zero, you probably guessed it, that the image is completely dark and it's not reflecting any light at all. In this case, it's absorbing all the possible light. The diffuse, when we turn that up, well, if it's all at one, we end up with a very matte finish. So there's lots of diffuse reflection coming from here. So you, we have that scattering effect that we looked at earlier. So this would be very similar to a terracotta pot. So if we change this to sort of uh, maybe that sort of color, uh, there you go. Oh, that's a bit too pink now. Very close, I was the second click. Uh, there, I'm not gonna faff, faff about with this. So um, there we go, sort of a terracotta pot. But if you were to gloss that pot, you would add some specular to it. So that would give it some highlights. So we bring the specular up and see how it looks. Now in this case, this is looking rather plasticky still. And we may need to actually change the hardness. So if we lower that down, you'll find that the highlights get more and more spread out. And if we make it really, really, really hard, it goes up to 511. We end up with these very fine, wispy-like highlights. So that changes the apparent hardness or sharpness of those reflections. You can play about with those to your heart's content. Ramp, well that changes the way that the colour is brought into the scene. And as we can see here, it enables a lot more options. And we're not going to go into those at the moment either. Just need to know about these two items here. Now these two here, the Lambert and Cook Tour, they're the shader types. So you've got five options of diffuse shader and five options of specular shader. Now these change how the diffuse and specular shading is worked out and it does vary quite dramatically between all of these um, Fresnel if I'm pronouncing that correctly as you can see here has changed it very very dramatically and these are quite sensitive let's turn it up maybe to 1.2 maybe that down to 2 so you get a very sort of chrome like effect going on with the Fresnel shader going on there. The Cook Tour on here, well, if we change it, we see we get much sharper. I'm just going to change these now. You get a completely different feel and look to your model depending on which shader option you go for. Some of them will be very, very similar. So I quite like in this one the Warzido or Paul Wardiso. I can't. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's uh, use a Ward Anisotropic shader. So there's lots of options there and you can change these about to your heart's content and get the actual end result that you want. That's got incredibly plastic at this point, but there we go. We can see that the Orin Naya one in, uh, it gives this new option down here, roughness. So that will increase, I presume, the apparent roughness of the material, making it slightly darker by the looks of things. Now this is quite a smooth material, so I don't know whether um, we'd get a decent result playing about with it anymore. Now if we look behind the area where we don't get any light at the moment, now this is again one of the things to remember with Blender Render, um, you won't get any bounce off of other objects, but you can fake some of that. I know we said we're not going to dip into the shading or anything lower, but one of the things that you can do is just make the material itself slightly emissive, as if it's giving off light. And of course it would give off light if there was something hitting the back. So if you turn up the emit value ever so slightly, all of a sudden the back is not completely dark. One or two is absolutely fine. And that just gives it a bit more detail in the background. There are other options down here. Feel free to play with them. One of my favorites is mirror. Turning the reflectivity all the way up. Of course, that's reflecting. What's it reflecting? Absolutely nothing. It's reflecting the environment around it. Um, but obviously, you can play with that to your heart's content. Perhaps pop something in an environment and turn the reflectivity up. Okay, so to just finalize here, I've done the monkey Suzanne uh, using all five different diffuse shaders. So over here in the outline, I'm just going to turn them on one at a time. So this is the, as I've said before, it's Fresnel, it's not the S is actually silent, so I'm assuming it's Fresnel. Um, this is what it would look like. Uh, turn Lambert on, we can see that that is ever so slightly different as well. 
Uh, the mini art is down here. Let's turn on the Auron. That's up there. And then finally the Tomb Shader. And we'll just let that render out. And you can see that each one is drastically different from the last one. They're completely different in their appearance. So it's worthwhile trying out the various ones to get the style that you want. Right, a quick challenge for you guys now. A reflection challenge. So assuming the same lighting conditions, grab a pen and paper and name yourself a material that is almost 100% specular. Then think about which materials you think have almost no specularity, but don't have reflections on them. Now look at items around you and you will suddenly start noticing this detail in objects in themselves. So pause the video now and give that a go. Okay guys, welcome back. Well, looking around what I had, I had my teapot here, lovely reflection in there and my little uh, Bluetooth headset and they were very glossy um, and highly specular um, which can clearly see reflections of the windows amongst other things in those objects. So going on to a medium specular, well my microphone stand is sort of a satin finish to it and has quite clearly defined um, specularity on it but it's not super reflective. Um, same with the toy train that I have on my desk for some bizarre reason and I notice of course there is a bit of high specularity in the wheel hubs and the magnet up the front but that's fine, the rest is sort of a medium. And then finally a low specular, I've got an old Nexus phone and the backer of it is very rubberized so it, it doesn't really um, reflect anything at all. In fact, in this case, that leading edge there is really exaggerated because there's a light quite close to it. How did you guys get on? Hope you now get what diffuse and specular are, and I will see you in the next lecture.